So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take off the wheels that we know we're gonna need. Now we were looking at the picture online and it turns out that we're gonna need these two big ones with the uh, with the teeth that are in the center. Those are for sure. Now we're also going to need three small ones for each side. So these small ones here. So I'm going to just kind of line them up here. Make some room. So you kind of see what I'm doing here. Two. So that's one side. What's going to happen is that this is going to go, and this is going to be the one actually moving the tank treads. We only have two axles in the gearbox, so therefore we only need two of these. That's the assumption I'm making right now, and I think it's pretty valid. Basically, the Tamiya track kit allows you to do different configurations which is why they come with so many pieces, but all we need are going to be these here. So we have these three for each side. Okay, this is going to be the rear. These are for the rear, this is for the center portion, and then we're going to get one for each front, but they're actually smaller pieces. So I believe it's these up here, if I'm not mistaken. And we're only going to need two of them as per the picture that I'm looking at here one on either side okay now the other part that we need are a way to close it off because on the other side let's see do we even need that I might have outspoken myself here so let's just kind of zoom into the picture looks like we're only going to need four. So basically these parts up here are going to be used and those are the parts that actually connect this or cover up the holes around the other side of this. Let me go ahead and just, this is going to take too long so let's just uh, four for each side. Right now it does not look like we need to have the back portion. That might be completely wrong, but it's just what it appears to be. So we have that. Okay, so let's just move these off to the side up here. Just kind of recounting here. Okay, yep. All right. So what we're going to have to do is, we're going to have to do a little bit of magic here because basically what we have to do is we're going to construct the rest of the kit with the aluminum pieces, the robot controller board that they've included, and this part right here. Now we're going to actually break here and solder the connections onto the motors. One thing we have to be certain of that we want to talk about, and it's basically how these this is all going to be mounted together. Now, 
just so happens that this is going to be the rear portion right here of the robot itself. Now, that's just the way it's designed. I'm not sure if we can turn it around or not, put, on this, put this in the front and whatnot, but what I was looking at was basically how we're going to mount the gearbox and this. So what happens is that we're going to have to mount this flush to this unit. So if we mount, mount this back here, okay, this is going to stick out in the back. It's going to be slightly off. It's not going to work right. So we have to mount it back here. Okay. Now the important thing to note here, two things. Number one, there's literally, uh, there's absolutely very little or no clearance between the motor and the actual controller here. Um, I would recommend maybe possibly plugging in uh, you know, putting in some spacers, although I'm not sure if we can um, to give this an extra rise. The other part is that some of the soldering points that are sticking out from the bottom actually keep this from being flush. So be careful when you're mounting this. Make sure you mount it right and uh, make sure that nothing is touching anything in the contacts on the actual motors themselves. So in our next video you'll see us putting this all together with wires connected to the motors mounting it all together, putting the tracks together, and it'll be one more step closer to having this completed. That's it for now. We'll be back soon.